this is the second video in the series and here we're not really going to do anything at all except move some files around after we've imported the daikon files converted them to nifty we're just going to put them in sensible places spm has now finished uh, in importing those daikon images converting them to nifty format Sometimes it's difficult to tell if SPM is finished because the progress window just goes blank. But if you check the MATLAB command window in the background, it'll tell you when it's done each of the batch elements and when it's done the entire batch job. So you know that's complete. Always check what it's done. So if we go back to the directory or folder with the images, we see some new images have been created with an F prefix and a .nii suffix. So these are functional images, the EPI sequence from the experiment. And in addition to those, the original DICOM images, we also have some S prefixed images, S for structural. These first three we can just delete because those are the orthogonal localizer images taken at the beginning of the session to check the subject or participant's position in the scanner. It's this last one with the 160 there that's interesting. It's a very large image because this is the one millimeter resolution T1 anatomical structural image which we got as 160 separate DICOM images, each a separate transverse slice, which the DICOM conversion has put together into one three-dimensional image volume. This should work fine with no problems, this DICOM import, but it's always a good idea to have a look at your images um, to check everything is OK. So just use the SPM display function to have a look at those images, check the structural is OK. It looks good and there's nice contrast between the grey and the white matter. There's another video where I go through all the options in the display and what all the information means. So check that out uh, because it does lots of uh, useful stuff including adding statistical data later if we need to. We can also have a look at, uh, we've got uh, a lot of other images but just choose one of the functionals at random. Uh, have a good look at it, make sure it corresponds to what you believe it should correspond to in terms of voxel size, um, the dimensions, uh, numbers of slices, and that's all looking fantastic. Check that for all your participants to make sure you've got all the right data. We've converted the DICOM images and we're ready to start the analysis in SPM, but before we do that, it's important to have a sensible folder structure for storing all our images because we're going to be producing a lot of new sets of images and already having just put some DICOM images in a folder, put a nifty conversion of those images in a folder, we've already got nearly 400 images in a folder, we're going to have an awful lot more when we've finished. We want to easily be able to select the images we want and make no mistakes. So it's important to have a sensible folder structure and to set it up at the beginning. So what I'm going to do is, for now I'll just do this a simple way using here the, the Max Finder on Windows you can use the Explorer but it's actually quicker to use a, a terminal and type some commands use the command window in Windows or just write a script and do it all in MATLAB um, but for simplicity's sake all I'm going to do is, is create some subfolders for the different types of images we've got so I've got participant 10 here I'll just create a new folder and I'll call that DICOM. I'll put all the DICOM images in there. Um, I will also create a new folder. Uh, shall I use short names or long names? Sometimes I use not long names, so a folder for the functional images. Sometimes I use a short name and just call them F. I'll call that F. Um, so we've got one for DICOM, one for the functionals. We're going to do a few other things though. And for example, we are going to maybe realign the functionals, and then we'll have a realign functional folder called RF. And then um, what we're also going to do is going to warp or normalize those images to match template shape, so we can do direct statistical comparisons between images. And those will be warped images. They'll be the warped realign functional images. So I'll make a folder for those. And then um, after we've warped them, before we do the statistics, we'll smooth them. So we'll have smoothed, warped, realigned functional images. I'll make a folder with that name. Um, also here we've got some uh, structural images. 
and we are going to do lots of things with the structural image, uh, including segment it into grey and white matter, create a nice three-dimensional surface render. So we need a separate place to keep all that. And I'm actually going to call that structural rather than S. You could call it anatomical. If I just use the S prefix, it could be confused with smooth. So I'm just going to put structural there. Okay, so now I've got um, some folders there. What I'm going to do before uh, Before I, I put the DICOM images in the DICOM folder, the structurals in the structural, the functionals in the functional, is just these six folders. I'll, I'll just uh, copy that structure and just paste it into the other five, four participants, just so they have the same structure as well. I'm assuming here that you're familiar with creating moving files folders uh, on whatever system you use and it's quite straightforward you, for you. So for participant 10, now all I do is I just select all those functional images and pop them in the F folder. I take the original DICOM images and put them in the DICOM folder and uh, do you know what? These three localized images I don't need. I'm just going to put them in the trash. Uh, I can still get them back if I, for any reason I needed them because I've got the original DICOM images, but we're not going to use them at all. What I definitely do want is this nice, beautiful high-res structural render. I've got some of them and put that in the structural directory. So now I have my DICOM images converted to functional and the ones converted to the structural image. And I've got a couple folders ready for the next ones. All I need to do now is do the same for the other participants. Here's what you can do if you're a power user used to entering commands using MATLAB or a, a terminal window. Rather than spending a lot of time selecting files and dragging and dropping, which is fine for one or two files, but when you've got to do hundreds, it's a bit of a pain to make sure you get it all right, is we can just use some system commands um, to move files. You can do it all in um, MATLAB, from the MATLAB window, you can set up a script to do it. Or we can just, Windows use the command line, Mac use the command line. So I'll bring up a, a little terminal window. And uh, I have got my uh, five participants here. I've already moved around the files for participant 10. If I go into the participant 11 directory and list everything that's in there, uh, I already copied in the, the folders I want, but they're empty. What I can do is I can just use a, a terminal command to move files where I want. So everything that starts with an S uh, and ends with .nii, I want to go into my structural directory. Everything that starts with an F and ends with .nii, I want to move into the functional directory. I don't have a functional directory, I just called it f. Everything that starts, everything that just ends with the .ima for a DICOM, I'm just going to put in the DICOM directory. So now if I list that directory, there are no files there, there's just my folder structure. And then I can do the same uh, for the other participants as well. And move the uh, DICOMs, move the functionals, move the structurals. We can do this all from MATLAB as well, uh, but one word of warning, if you use the MATLAB move file command, it can be quite slow. It's best just to make MATLAB use the system command. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, then don't bother. Just either use your systems file handler, finder, explorer, or use a command window terminal and move files around that way. Another way of performing file operations like moving files around to sensible places is to use SPM's batch editor. Uh, 
Um, this enables you to do, apart from all the sophisticated SPN things, basic input output. And if you go to the basic input output menu, file directory operations and file operations, you can just move or delete files. And so here it says files to move slash copy slash delete, and we can specify those. And so here I've got some I, I haven't moved, all these uh, functional images that have just been converted. And then the action I want is to move them. And then it needs to know where to move them to. And I've created a folder for them, which is called F. And now I've specified that, I can just set it going, and it does that. And I can check it's done that, because it says it's done. And I can check my uh, finder window, and I find that where I had all these functional images, it's popped them into the directory called F. That might seem a slightly clumsy way of doing things, but it's actually very useful, because it means you can set it up as part of an action to run manually, uh, without manual input, sorry. So you can set up an entire analysis, including rearranging files, without having to faff around with the finder or with the command line and do it yourself. Everything can be done unattended, and you can check it works. So don't forget, pretty much anything you need to do, you can also do with a handy batch editor. So that was 11 and a half minutes just moving some files around, but bear with it, it's really important, and it will pay off later when it comes to analysing the data.